Are you ready? Combate Global! La razón uh, cual the why I fight yo peleo is, uh, es mi hermano, mi puso en el deporte, luchas y luego la, uh, la seguí, falleció But de cáncer. Mi hermano fue mi coach, fue mi coach my coach um, desde, was, desde chiquito. No dejamos, sabes que no dejamos a mi hermana luchar. Pero mira, hace como tres o cuatro años. My Mama mother died of cancer. This is my memories of them, and they're together now. I have a photo of my mother on my uh, left shoulder. This is the only way to help my family. Axel Osuna, come to fight because I am coming to win. Reyes Cortez, Bullock Jr., the pride of Glendale, Arizona, coming into the Jaula. This is USA versus Mexico. And very appropriate in Miami, he comes out to some Mark Anthony. An incredible venue, this. And again, a lot of blood has been spilled. A lot of people have been hurt inside the Jaula, but there's always a lot of respect from the fighters of Combate Global. I will stand by them as the best group of pugilists in the business so difficult to watch this because of the stories of these guys they are salt of the earth buena gente as we say in latin america that applies for cortez as his opponent axel osuna Esta pelea va a ser this fight is going to be different diferente very Muy different diferente. he tenido el campamento I am coming más off largo the de longest vida. camp of my life it was a year trabajar. and a half of work and work cosas que a lot has changed from my first three fights porque, pues, lo han dicho I have said creo que lo that a lot of people view of me as a new fighter maybe I have some luck con well I really was surprising because I discovered holes in my game que la gente creía que no lo sabía, some that I weren't even aware of no, de verdad, va a ser una pelea que voy a mucho it is a fight that I'm going to enjoy and that the public will too Junior Cortez, Junior Cortez éxito, good luck y estés listo para I hope you're ready to fight Axel Osuna is 3-0 fighting as a flyweight. He fights as a bantamweight tonight. I have had the pleasure of calling all three of his fights under the Combate banner, and folks, this guy is sensational. He's young, he's still learning, as you heard in that introduction. He found holes in his game, and during the pandemic, he had a year and a half to fine tune everything, and he thinks he has discovered the winning recipe to make him a force anywhere in MMA, and he's here for Combate Global. 24, the next step for Osuna, moving up to 135, and with that, he concedes a little bit of size and reach to Junior Cortez. Time now for the voice of the Jaula, Lupe Contreras. Arrancamos con mucha más acción, las reglas de la Jaula. Tres vueltas de cinco minutos, tres jueces, utilizando el sistema de 10 puntos. Este duelo en la división Peso Gallo de Spout. En la Bantam Weight Division, los jueces son, the judges are, Héctor Gómez, John Rupert y Eliseo Rodríguez. Y ahora llegó el momento de un combate global. En la esquina azul, en the blue corner, vestido de negro, wearing black, su peso oficial, 135 libras y tres cuartos, the official weight, 135 and three quarter pounds. En su sexto combate dentro de la jaula, con cuatro victorias y solo una derrota. En el sixth bout inside of la jaula, with four victories and one defeat. Repping the AZ, Phoenix, Arizona, Reyes. Junior Cortez. En la esquina contraria, 
vestido de blanco en the opposite corner, wearing white. Su peso oficial, 134 libras y un cuarto. His official weight, 134 and one quarter pounds. Esta noche, entra la jaula invicto en tres combates profesionales. Tonight, he enters la jaula undefeated as a pro in three bouts. De la perla tapatilla, Guadalajara, Jalisco, México. El charro, Axel. Osuna. El referee, Raúl Borrata. Vengan al centro. Al centro. Ah, Raúl Borrata, third man inside. La jaula. Tomando y protesten en todo momento. Yo quiero una pelea limpia. Toquen guanten ahora si quieren. Vamos a esperar a la esquina. Esperen. ¡Listo! ¡Listo! ¡A pelear! Señores y señoras, we have been back for a few months for Combate Global, and I could argue this is the fight I have been looking to the most. Two killers at 135. Reyes Jr. Cortez in the black, representing the United States, and an arm bar right out of the jump here for Axel Osuna. Almost has it locked in. He is 3-0 in Combate Global. He has finished all his fights via submission. He has got a triangle on Cortez. His legs are like arms. This guy is amazing. Osuna now trying to adjust. What a start here. 3-0, Axel Osuna. Junior Cortez, four and one. Another adjustment for Osuna. He feels very comfortable down there. Get some hammer blows from Cortez. Unbelievable stuff here. So much at stake to get on the pecking order. But like a boa constrictor from the bottom, Osuna is dictating terms. Cortez has to be so careful as that left arm is jammed in there. Osuna is incredible when you look at his jiu-jitsu game, but he really comes in in a specialty in so many ways, which is surprising. Competed in Muay Thai and K1. He was a boxing uh, fighter growing up in Mexico, had 103 fights. He was 103 and also 5-0 and in Muay Thai. And then he has this jiu-jitsu game that is off the charts. Such a prodigy. An incredible uber prospect here for Combate. The same can be said for Junior Cortez. Feels like he has a, a real home here. He has a fighting family. You heard about his brother who he lost to cancer, who was his inspiration. Got him into fighting. His brother wouldn't let sister Tracy fight. Eventually she got in there and now she's on the roster at UFC. She was with Combate Global prior, so it's a family affair for the Cortezes here at Combate. Look at this jiu-jitsu game for Osuna. He has Cortez completely locked in. First it was the arm, and now it's that right leg. Osuna like... It's, it's incredible. He's, he's in the lab, and he's working on anything that could be pragmatic or functioning in a way to win this fight. Finally, Cortez able to slip away, but Osuna just tracks around. A lot of time you hear these fighters and they go, we don't spend too much time focusing on my opponent, but Cortez has to know about Osuna's incredible jiu-jitsu game and submission ability. And now we go stand-up combination Osuna. Good use of the jab, lead leg. Osuna misses a warning of a low blow for Raul Borata. Under two minutes to go in this opening round. You're seeing everything from Osuna. The ground game and now the stand-up game, and he's good at both. But so is Junior Cortez, moving away, although Osuna taking the center of the howler, being more aggressive. Almost a clash of heads there. Cortez takes the back. Don't grab the fence. Cortez saying, don't grab the fence. He goes, I did not. He has quite the following. We have videos of the fighters doing interviews on our Instagram page. Check it out, Combate Global. 
and we usually get like three or four thousand views per video. The one on Junior Cortez right now has twelve thousand views. On our Twitter page, check out Compate Global on Twitter. There's a poll: who is going to win this fight? And when I last checked it, it was 69% in favor of Cortez. So he's got his peeps looking out for him. And all due respect, he could probably win this fight. But this is really a 50-50 proposition. And Osuna did come in the betting favorite, and for obvious reasons. Quite the chess match here. This is extraordinary stuff. If you are a fan of MMA, MMA, mucho más acción. You've got to love this, and, they're, and, and they go from the ground to the stand-up, side control here. As we hit yes, 10 seconds off. to go, Cortez looking to do something. It's impossible to get any leeway. I think he's better keeping this fight on the feet. A little bit of a risk control for Osuna. Osuna is, you can see he's been working on his game. He said that, he said it had a year and a half camp. I found holes in how I fought. Now Cortez took the fight, great takedown there, but as soon as he got it down, Osuna went to work. Almost the arm bar, he had it extended for a moment, and then you can see Osuna, he throws his back to get that leverage. Such a smart fighter at such a young age. He's, he's 24, he looks like he's 18. Great round. Hard to give it. I think Corner I give it out. to Osuna. We have people, Marcelo Pitbull Rojo, who's been everywhere this past week. And uh, if you didn't see it, Brandon Moreno, the new flyweight champ at UFC. And it's Listo. big for Listo. all of us Apagar. here at Combate because Brandon Moreno, part of Entram Gym, which has provided so many fighters for us here at Combate, as Osuna goes down as a glancing blow from Cortez. I think Osuna's okay. But he got flushed there. Risk control. The warning to watch the up kicks from the corner of Cortez. By the way, hats off to Cortez and our fighter later, Eric Sanchez. They're American guys, but they did their interviews in Spanish. Obviously of Mexican lineage. It's interesting, Cortez talked about the journey of his family from Mexico to Arizona. Uh, this is flying out of Glendale, but introduced from Phoenix, which is an incredible area for MMA. But he said his family crossed the border legally and moved here to the United States. And now he's identified as a, as a Mexican-American big kick into the ribs by Osuna. Not too much behind it, but still leaving a marker there. That one was a little, that had a little bit more sting behind that one from Osuna. Fighting out of Guadalajara, another great fight town. Cortez in Arizona, he went to uh, same high school as Olympic medalist Henry Cejudo, and it turns out he trains with Henry Cejudo, who is the former UFC flyweight, bantamweight champion. Some feints for Osuna, but he's got great footwork, and he can just adjust from one spot to the next. Cortez trying to figure out Osuna. Checking out the, the distance. Thought about the takedown, but he was in between two places, and Cortez got caught. Osuna's starting to dictate this fight. Cortez is starting to hurt. He doesn't like it. Got hit again, takes a knee, and Osuna's doing everything with power. Cortez so frustrated. What works? Every time he goes in for a clinch or he gets a bit close, he takes a whooping. So excited for this fight and has not disappointed. Halfway through it, halfway through this second round. Osuna's activity. You see, he doesn't take a rest. Fitness and cardio, kids. You want to do this, you're going to... You're going to have to learn to get hit. You have to learn to hit. But more than anything, you're going to have to learn to survive inside that cage. Cortez with a takedown. That'll help. But look at how Osuna gives him no passage through. Will not let him clear his guard. 
not even close to clearing the guard. Now he's trying to set up the arm bar. Overhead shot of the Haula there in Miami. Record numbers of viewers tuning in on TUDN in the United States. I believe our last fight we eclipsed over close to 600,000 viewers. This is not a Campbell. Our Campbell McLaren, our, our leader on social media, and he will tell you, oh, almost a slip there, almost caught the ankle lock. Osuna got caught coming in, better from Cortez, takedown attempt. He'll just lay the foundation here. One inch height advantage for Cortez. This is the combate debut for Junior Cortez. He's won his last three fights. I really hope these are two guys that we get to see fight a lot under this banner and maybe meet again. So far, this is, has been a real good encounter. And yeah, you got to be happy with the growth from Osuna. He is, he's taken the, the higher ground here, but you also have to admire Stop. the adaptability, as that may have been a low blow. Time. Adaptability here from Cortez. Osuna just did no not coaching. flinch. No coaching right now. No coaching. Asking if Osuna's okay. He said, yep. Okay. Warning. That was a big knee, too. Let's see how, how firmly it struck. Cortez picking up the pace now. 30 seconds to go here in round two. Osuna spins around again, looking for that arm bar. Three wins, all finished by submission in the first or second round. Uh-oh, uh-oh here for Cortez. Both arms are caught in there. Osuna now has complete control. Going for that arm bar. Cortez is paralyzed in this situation. He's able to get that arm out, though. Fantastic. Submission defense, somewhat of a side control. I don't think they'll be able to get much out of this second round, but a hammer fist there by Osuna. On the way out, Cortez. Getting up very slowly. Osuna fresh as a daisy. Definitely a round for Osuna there. Although Cortez had his moments. I, I think the knees are what's working best for him. When you're looking at prospects, when you're looking at young fighters that can take that next step, Osuna has it all. We didn't know about the, the ground game and the jujitsu, but that's his specialty now. He fought 103 times as a boxer. You would assume that is his meat and potatoes, carne y papas. But it's not. It's good. He's, he uses it, and he's really good at it. But what wins him fights is the submissions. And you could see him working it out there, and hats off for Junior Cortez for being able to slip out of not one, but two arm bar attempts. Also that triangle choke that was in there as well. Round three in a very close fight. I think Osuna, I'm, I'm confident he won round two. Round one a little closer though. Osuna's been the aggressor the whole time. Optics are so important for the judges here. Kick into the midsection, kick up by the chin of Cortez. The primal screams every time Osuna fires off a strike. For every punch Cortez throws, Osuna throws two. It's deep end of the pool time for Reyes Jr. Cortez. Takedown attempt, hit it on the button. And he gets into the guard. He wasn't able to do that. Remember, Osuna was able to get his legs up in front of the shoulders the prior two attempts. It's a thinking man's game, and these guys are college educated. They work hard, and they have to be students of mixed martial arts. In particular, Cortez, when he gets to the ground, he has to beat Leary and think one move ahead. It's a lot on your plate. Another armbar attempt. Osuna wasn't able to squeeze in. A warning there, uh, maybe an eye, a finger in the eye from Osuna. Raul Porata right on it. 
This has worked well for Cortez. Spinning out almost into the arm bar. My goodness, Osuna is a whirling dervish. How do you attack this man? My people, I was looking forward to this fight and this has exceeded my expectations. Cortez tries to catch Osuna. Another takedown attempt. I think if he get another takedown here, he's in a good position to win round three, speaking of Junior Cortez. He said he plans on stealing the show. Also said it was not that impressed by Osuna. I'm sure he'll change his tune regardless of the outcome here. Osuna now, it's, it's such a wide variety of attacks. And it's relentless, never stops, showing Cortez different things. Cortez has done something no prior opponent for Osuna has been able to do and get to the third round. Cortez is really having a nice third round, making some headway. As my partner, Juliana Peña, who's preparing for a fight against Amanda Nunes at UFC for the strap. As she would always say, when you have an unbeaten fighter in the case of Axel Osuna, opponents want that O to go. It's very hard to stay unbeaten in this sport, but you'd like to stay unbeaten as long as you can. But just one loss between these two fighters. Both of their careers are in pampers. Great work rate for Cortez. He is really showing his desire, and he has got Osuna held firm in this third round. And we are under two minutes to go. And there's a frustration for Osuna. Improve your position. Mejor la posición. We just started on top. Side control here for Junior Cortez as he gets further up into the shoulders of Osuna, limiting his movement. And those armbar attempts just don't have that zip that they had in rounds one and two. But it just takes a moment. They're telling him 80 seconds to go. And Osuna's he's losing this round. Could still win it. With one of his trademark submissions. And you wonder if Osuna, a true flyweight, many believe, fighting at phantom weight. He's feeling a stronger fighter, and it's starting to wear him down here in round three. Right. He punches Osuna. Speaking of flyweights, back in October of 2018, Osuna beat Edgar Chaidez via a triangle armbar. And Chaidez is now our flyweight champion. Another takedown there by Cortez. His wrestling's been big here. Yeah, the uh, corner there from Cortez. Yes. Ten, segundos. Ten seconds, and really the question now, who won the first round? Cortez is flying high. He probably wishes we had a five-round fight. Fantastic stuff from these two fighters. Después de completar tres vueltas dentro de la jaula, esta es la decisión oficial after going three rounds inside of la jaula. The official scorecard reads as follows. Los jueces Sellers y Rupert entregan tarjetas idénticas de 29 a 28. Judges Sellers and Rupert turn in identical scores of 29 to 28. Y el juez Rodríguez anotó 30 a 27. Judge Rodríguez scores at 30 to 27. All in favor of the winner by way of unanimous decision. Los tres a favor del ganador por decisión unánime. Reyes Junior. Reyes Junior Cortez improves to five and one, and Axel Osuna tastes defeat in MMA for the first time. And when I heard the third judge's score. 30 to 27, you knew that Reyes Cortez won that fight because there is no way that he lost that third round. Coming up next, the Bull, Jordan Beltran, the fight against Eric Sanchez. And just
just like the fight we had, another USA versus Mexico matchup. Última pelea. Jordan Beltran, my last fuerte. fight was against a strong un, opponent. Un I knew he was Sin a big hitter. Round logro I went after him no and knocked him out in the second round. round. Que, que What I know about my opponent is he likes to change his strikes. He has fought at some big companies, and to beat him will give me a major plus. He's a big fighter, and I hope that it goes that way. I want to give a show. No boring fights. Este, pues, todo, I came to exchange también. blows too. Eric, vamos a dar Eric una gran pelea. let's Espero give him no a great fight. I hope you don't get disappointed. Jordan Beltran coming off a second round win over Jose Zaraos on the undercard of the Jose Aldai fight just, la just last April, just a couple months ago. And uh, he said this is where he wants to be. It was a dream that has been answered, fulfilled, being able to fight in combate. Started as a boxer. He's got great striking skills. He's a big lightweight, too. Strong guy. And he is going to take on Eric Sanchez. I'm a smart fighter. I like to be first. I like to be fast. Well, we need to play our game. Uh, the volume of strikes, uh, my opponent, I, I will have an advantage. It's mental. I can go. And I don't worry about the time. I will go until I get the result. I am 100% sure I will win, but I am 50-50 when it will end. I will always be looking for the finish. Jordan, I hope you're ready, because I am. Sanchez from Sacktown, representing the United States. Jordan Beltran, his opponent, representing Mexico. Big time fight here. Look, Sanchez, his hair's gotten long since we last saw him. As we go to the tail of the tape, this is going to be a tough one to call. We got to get the banking order at 155 going here at Combate Global. Both guys in the midst of the high point of their career, 31 and 30. Two-inch height advantage for Sanchez. Two-inch reach advantage for the former boxer and heavy puncher, Jordan Beltran. Continuamos con mucha más acción. Este es el duelo estelar de esta noche. This is the main event of the evening. Tres vueltas en la división peso ligero. Three rounds in the lightweight division. Los jueces son, the judges are, Eliseo Rodriguez, Héctor Gómez y John Rupert. Y ahora, damas y caballeros, llegó el momento de un combate global. Presentando en la esquina azul, vestido de blanco, introducing the blue corner, wearing white, su peso oficial, 154 libras y media, his official weight, 154 and one half pounds, en su décimo séptimo combate dentro de la jaula, con un récord de 10 victorias y 6 derrotas, he enters la jaula for the 17th time as a pro, with 10 victories against 6 losses, de Puebla, México, Jordan. Bon Beltrán. Su rival en la esquina roja, 
Vestido de rojo is upon in the red corner. Wearing red. Su peso oficial, 154 libras y tres cuartos. He weighed in at an official 154 and three quarter pounds. En 15 combates a nivel profesional. Mantiene un récord de nueve victorias y seis derrotas. In 15 pro bouts, he maintains a record of nine victories against six losses. Fighting out of Sacramento, California. Y puro león, Guanajuato, México. Eric Sánchez, el referee Raúl Porrata. Al centro, al centro. Raúl Porrata. Una limpia. Puede cambiar el comando. Dejen todo tiempo. Toquen guanten ahora. Regresen a su esquina. Listo, listo, a pelear. We are underway, Beltrán in the white shorts, representing Puebla, Mexico. Puebla, by the way, if you love food, great place to visit in Mexico, but I think you can say that about 20 cities in that country. Best cuisine in the world, don't at me. These are facts. Beltrán trying to set up that big haymaker of a right hand. Quite a contrast from our earlier fight where Junior Cortez and Axel Osuna had a combined eight fights coming in. These two gentlemen a combined 31 fights. You can see Eric Sanchez, a decorated amateur fighter. He's had a pretty good MMA career, but he's taken some losses that he was, he tells you himself he was hoping they could have been avoided. Beltran headhunting there. Beltran 10 and 6, Sanchez 9 and 6. Sanchez last fought with Bellator. He's actually had a couple fights, one and one at Bellator. In between, he's had many fights. He has slimmed down a fair bit. And you can see uh, easily can't sit in that 155 pound limit. This is always, if you're not very familiar with MMA, there's a 10 pound difference between each weight class from flyweight to bantam to feather to light. And then there's a 15 point gap to the next weight class. So if you can't get under 155, you have to put on a lot of weight to get up to 170. There's been a lot of discussions about adding a, an extra weight class, a super lightweight, but it hasn't happened. It's just it's just a weird area that you, you gotta make sure you're not caught in between. Sanchez, right hand into the stomach. This is wildly with that kick. Reset for Eric Sanchez. It's so, so great to hear these fighters in there interviews prior to getting inside the jaula and how priority one is always to entertain they really respect the fans this is what combate wants to, to become they want to provide fights that are entertaining that mirror the fights that you have in mexico in california in arizona and we're expanding our boundaries looking forward to some more south american fighters looking forward to, to finding some european fighters get in on combate global now because the future is going to be very bright some big news on the horizon and sanchez caught beltran inviting him to come beltran with that great hair by the way he's got that antonio banderas hair and he just says i'm okay Oh, big overhead left. That worked for Beltran. See if he can do it and set up a follow-up. Peppering that jab for Beltran. And he can switch stances, a little dance. By the way, hats off to Sanchez, who ate that kick into his lead leg. It didn't look like it hurt him, but it does. Sanchez uh, talking to La Voz de la Jaula, Lupe Contreras, to throw in a Leon Guanajuato. There's uh, his family was from prior to settling in Sacramento. 
Sanchez active, good right hand, missing badly, Beltran. Sanchez has been real good. He connected with his right hand, but he got caught with Beltran. Beltran's hands are real fast, folks. One minute to go in this opening round. MMA is big in the border towns. Tijuana, Mexicali. It's big in Monterrey in northern Mexico. Getting a lot of steam for obvious reasons in Mexico City. Guadalajara. Puebla, a little different. And it's a very charming city as Beltran. Actually, Sanchez fell from his strike. Beltran's leg like a tree trunk. Sanchez has to stay out of that range. If Beltran catches to you, you're in trouble. You can just ask Jose Zaraus. Back in April. Those high knees preventing your opponent from hitting your lead. Yes, segundos. Looking to end with a flourish here. Beltran catches that leg from Sanchez. Both fighters Tiempo. remain out of range. Beltran very frustrated with that opening round. You can see it just didn't work. And not that Eric Sanchez blew out the lights in that opening round, but he, he, he seemed to get into his game plan. Those kicks to the leg barely leave a mark. Beltran is so strong, but that one, it's a little bit of a combination of losing the balance, but there was contact. <gasps> Getting back to Beltran and fighting out of Puebla, he trains alone. His academy is called Striker, and he started the academy in Puebla, Mexico. So not only is he Corners breaking out. new ground for that city in Mexico, but he might find the next talent that goes in. This really is a, a sport that pays it forward. In many ways, you're a fighter. Listo. But you got to make Listo. ends meet. A pelear. And if you can start a gym, and it can become lucrative, and it can. And you're able to do that. And it keeps MMA front and center. It becomes part of your life. Back in the middle. Eric Sanchez maybe got the edge in that first round. Beltran closing the gap. I mean, those hands hit like a thud. Sanchez, best to keep his distance. He did a really good job of that in the first round. Beltran, it's one... Shot and out. Oh, big right from, big left, I should say, from Beltran, and it set up the right hand. And now we're swinging for the fences. Wild Beltran. He's saying, get closer, Sanchez. Uh-uh. Sanchez knows about the power of Beltran, and Beltran's trying to lure him in. Big kick. How about the gamesmanship for Beltran? Starting to find the range. He just needs a, like another six inches to get closer to Sanchez. Sanchez, who's been training in MMA for seven years. Beltran's hands are heavy, and now he's closed the gap. We now put Oh, low blow in there. Stop, 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 buddy. Roll. Watch your low blow. Roll, put no out right stop it. Second low blow this evening. No coaching. Está bien? Listo? Ven, ven para acá. Sin falta, los dos, ¿ok? Paren esa cosa. I think it was like a, uh, almost a simultaneous low blow, but it was Beltran catching Sanchez. Beltran's probably going to have to eat some punches, but his punches will be stronger than Sanchez, so maybe it's worth it. First takedown there for Sanchez. Takes the steam out of Bull Beltran. What's your about a triangle for a moment, TV. but didn't come close. Sanchez is a guy, he says he loves to grapple. They're in the guard here of Beltran and get in the back. Six of the nine victories for Sanchez have come via TKO or KO. 
submission would be something new, but why not give it a shot? This is good for Sanchez, and he's found a way to keep his head above water in round one and round two. Even though he took some heavy blows here in the second round, that is kind of locked in, Beltan. He lowers the chin. Got to keep that chin down. And it didn't really, didn't really threaten Beltran too much there. Beltran giving up so much energy trying to get out of this. Again, the rear naked gets locked in. Sanchez has got it tight this time. And now it's under the chin. Beltran fighting and he's tapping. Eric Sanchez via rear naked choke yeah. in round two. Buena pelea. Tremendous. Buena pelea. Okay. Yeah, he's okay. Win number 10 via the RNC. Woo! Talk about figuring things out as you go along. It was all stand up. First takedown attempt for Sanchez, and he got to the back, went for the choke one time, he couldn't lock it in. Second time, he got it well under the chin, and it was over. Beltran in round two was making an impact with the punches, inviting Sanchez to get closer. Stop, stop. At centro. Sanchez, who says, I, I like to grapple, but I really enjoy the That's chaos of fight. striking. Well, Good fight. And it was just a single leg takedown. No, not the referee. Popped it in. And Beltran, second time, was cooked. Right there. Look at the eyes. World class jiu jitsu by Eric Sanchez. He fought with Combate in 2015. And this is his seventh fight, Sanchez. With Combate, he is now five and two. So he is a major food group developing here. Eric Sanchez, and I'm sure the folks in Sacramento are gonna be pumped. The Team Alpha Male camp and Uriah Faber and Sanchez has worked with that group. Uh, it's been up and down many times in his career. When he fought last with Bellator, it was in October of last year. He was defeated then. His last combate fight, he lost to Jose Luis Verdugo via decision. Clearly, this is a man who has been working on his game, and he beat a real good fighter in Jordan Beltran. And, folks, we have had two spectacular fights this evening. You can't miss Combate Global because you're always going to miss something. And we seconds. saw the moment of Junior Cortez and now Eric Sanchez. Let's go inside Close the aula to get the official decision from Lupe Contreras. Eric Sanchez, victorious. USA victorious. El tiempo oficial. 3 minutos 19 segundos del segundo capítulo, the official time. 3 minutes 19 seconds of round number 2, your winner. By way of submission, el vencedor, por su misión, Eric Sanchez. Eric Sanchez. Now we look forward to what he does next. And we'll get to see Jordan Beltran. Uh, Beltran signed a two-year deal with Combate, so we'll get to see him again very soon. We just saw him in April. And Eric Sanchez means the United States is now 2-0 in Combate. Coming up next, Carlos Reyes versus Germán Orpineda. Another Mexico versus USA. There is downtown at Miami Biscayne Boulevard. Everything happens right there in that little bay of water that is the entranceway from Miami to Miami Beach via two roadways, the MacArthur Expressway. Entrando a la jaula, as well. Lupe Carlos Reyes.
Carlos Reyes, we talked about Entram Gym, where Brandon Moreno, the new UFC flyweight champion, fights out of. Carlos Reyes from that gym. And I can assure you, when Brandon Moreno wins, and Marcelo Rojo, who is doing commentary for us, uh, who was in the corner that night for Moreno, and the fighters that come out of Entran Gym, it makes a huge impression. A young Su contrario, from all of Mexico, Germán Orpineda. Germán Orpineda. Uh, 0 and 1 in mixed martial arts, but it was a new discipline for him. He was a kickboxer, a professional kickboxer, 5 and 0, but said, I am going to MMA. I'm going to take my skill set there. He found out a very valuable lesson. It's not going to be easy, but he's here also to learn from mistakes and get it right. Continuamos con mucha más acción. Este duelo, tres vueltas, división. Peso Mosca, we continue with much more action. This bout, three rounds in the flyweight division. Los jueces son, the judges are. Eliseo Rodriguez, Byron Sellers, y Héctor Gómez. Y ahora, llegó el momento de un combate global. Presentando la esquina azul, introducing the blue corner. Vestido de negro, wearing black. His official weight, 125 and one quarter pounds. Su peso oficial, 125 libras y un cuarto. Con un record profesional de una victoria y una derrota with a pro record of one victory and one defeat. Straight out of TJ, Tijuana, Baja California, Mexico. Carlos, el Chacal Reyes. En la esquina opuesta. In the opposite corner, vestido de blanco, wearing white, he weighed in at 126 and one half pounds de tubo la báscula, a un peso oficial de 126 libras y media. Esta noche, entra a la jaula en busca de su primer victoria con récord de una derrota. Tonight, he enters la jaula looking for his first pro victory with a record of one defeat. De Chihuahua, Chihuahua, Mexico, Germán, el macho. Orpineda, el referee, Russ Greenberg. Russ Greenberg, the third man inside the jaula. Okay, guys, we went through the rules backstage. Obey my commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. Let's have a good, clean fight. Good luck. Touch him up. Let's do this. There is... Herman Orpineda judge, just saw judge, Carlos Reyes. Door. Judge, you're ready. Judge, you're ready. Door. Okay. Fighter, you're ready. Fighter, you're ready. Round one. Fight. We are underway here in this flyweight contest. Carlos Reyes from Tijuana in the black shorts. Oh, big suplex coming up and over. Almost a body slam. And this is where Orpineda, the kickboxer, does not want to be. And that's exactly why Reyes went there. Trying for that guillotine. Again, the big drop from Reyes. Getting back to my thought about Entram Gym. Now, the big gyms in the United States, you know them by name. Jackson MMA, Black House MMA, Extreme Couture, America Top Team, AKA, Team Quest. The list goes on. You know where they are. These fighters know where they are. And they know if they want to become a professional, if they want to go become a champion, you go there. Now in Mexico, number one is Entram Gym. It's created a UFC champion. It's created great fighters. It's created champions here at Combate Global. Now the best fighters in Mexico look to go there. So Entram Gym, a real success story. And that's just going to get bigger. We have so many great fighters from that gym here in Combate. And look forward to many more. And we know the best is yet to come. Mort Pineda locked in here as Reyes not letting him go. I always wanted to see, uh, and I don't, maybe the public is not into it as much as I am. I'm a bit of, a, you know, I'm, I'm crazy when it comes to this sport. A battle of Baja California. The Mexicali fighters versus Tijuana fighters versus the Ensenada fighters. See which city or town produces the best. It would be hard to beat Tijuana, but let me tell you something about Mexicali. 
incredible talent, including our current flyweight champion, which these two fighters are in, Edgar Chaides. <laughs> Carlos Reyes said something that really stuck with me in his pre-fight interviews. He says he's very comfortable at Combate Global, and he was asked why, and he goes, because they treat their fighters well, and they help them grow. Reyes with the takedown there. He has had his foot on the pedal. And Orpineda has just been in reaction mode. Reyes started karate at five years old, then moved on to jiu-jitsu. Watch the back of the head. Watch that. Reyes starting to clear the guard of Orpineda, who's been left wide open. He's a stand-up fighter. This is uncharted waters. He is. Uh, he was a kickboxing national champion in Mexico. Had one fight in combate. Made his debut back on April the sixth. Lost to Jonathan Calderon. Let's go, gotta work. I'm gonna stand you up via a submission, and that's what he's trying to avoid here. And that's exactly what Carlos Reyes is aware of. And you heard Russ Greenberg say, let's see some action, I'll stand you up. And that had to quicken the pulse of Reyes, who's looking to add another feather in the cap of Entram Jim. Orpineda getting to his feet. And we want to see him in a striking contest. But that's what Re Reyes knows that. He is trying to take the wind out of his striker sails. Not much behind those punches, but it's something for Orpineda, and he's back on his feet. Another takedown. Oh, and landed awkwardly on his leg. Kind of got caught underneath him. That can't have felt too good. Now, Orpineda says he's been working on his jiu-jitsu, said it's his weakness. You can see that here. He says he's been wrestling nonstop since that loss to Calderon back in April. Non-stop wrestling, non-stop jujitsu. Also studying to become a dentist. Needs three more years. Needs three more years to complete, man. They put you through the ringer at dentistry school, no? Studying at the Universidad Autonoma de Chihuahua, his hometown, now in Albuquerque. This is more Mexico versus Mexico, let's be honest. But you gotta represent. By the way, Albuquerque, when it comes to gyms and it comes to fight town. Right at the top. And we know it's certainly with Jackson MMA. Reyes couldn't get that knee, but he continues to dictate terms. Final 10 seconds of this round. Ten seconds. Come on, you got to work. And Reyes, yeah, and you see Russ Greenberg says you got to work. It hasn't been. Round, let it go. An exceptional round for Reyes, but he did enough to win that round. There's no doubt about it. He went for the weakness of Orpineda. As we'll take a look, and you know, Orpineda still has a long way to go. But you're in the, you're in the, you're fighting with the big boys. There's no, you, you can learn here, but it can't be such a deficit in jujitsu and and grappling. And you know, as people say when you talk about MMA fights. And we talk about it here at Combate Global. We, we, there's a smaller cage. You want it to be a stand-up fight. But fights generally end up on the ground. It's Whether it's a fight in the street, whether it's a fight in the gym, whether it's a fight inside the jaula, it's hard for not to head that way. You need to have a complete game. You want to entertain, and we've heard from these fighters how they want to push it and give the, the, the fans at home a show. But you've also got to be able to compete. Okay. Round two. Fight, you ready? Fight, you ready? Fight!
watching the fight where he feels like he'll have success, and that's to take Orpineda down. Orpineda cannot get himself in this situation. He's got to create some distance. I mean, this is a carbon copy of round one, and it didn't end well for Orpineda. He's going to end up on his back again here. As you see, waist control, Reyes connecting the grip. This, is, this looks like the first round, identical. And those little rabbit punches with no power behind them for Orpineda. Carlos Reyes, uh, we, he was asked about what do you like to do outside of the Jaula, and this is what he said. He says he likes walking up volcanoes. I'm going to check if they're down there in Tijuana. It's been a while since I've been in Tijuana, but I get down there. Tijuana, very underrated. I think a lot of people think of Tijuana, and uh, I don't know where your mind goes, but the food that you can eat there is fantastic, and the entertainment. There's always something going on. There's fights. There's, there's gambling. There's lucha libre. Did I mention the food? The food is exceptional. I had the best seafood I've ever had in Tijuana. And, uh, you know, there's, there's a, a bit of a rough part of town, but the good part of town, there's, I would recommend going to the boxing museum. Check out Tijuana. It's a great escape, especially if you're in Southern California or in Arizona or in the uh, Southwest United States. This is better for Orpinez. Got to watch those elbows to the back of the head. Didn't get a warning from Greenberg. I guess they were okay. But this is uh, better for Orpineda. Carlos Reyes says he likes to walk up volcanoes, horse watch riding. back of the head. Just everything. Motorcycle, swimming. This is a fun guy. I'm going to hang out with Carlos Reyes. Now in his fourth year of training for MMA. He wants to be the next success story from Entram Gym. Had a horrible episode. One of his head coaches was gunned down, and we know about the dangerous parts of Tijuana as Orpineda is going for a submission of his own. At least he's making uh, Reyes uncomfortable. I don't know if there is much danger in this submission attempt, but it's something which is better than nothing, which is what Orpineda has offered up here in this fight. He's just never had a shot, and that is because of the tactics of Reyes. Reyes is playing it pretty smart. You have Mine, a kickboxer work, guys. who you has it. And there's I'm the up. Russ Greenberg has identified. And this is Reyes trying to kill the fight, but it works. You're fighting a kickboxer with one fight in MMA. So you take him to the ground. It's uh, MMA 101. Reyes trying to get some blows in. He has to be aggressive here. He's been warned on two occasions by Russ Greenberg. Just to finish the story on Reyes, his, one of his coaches was gunned down, so he stopped training. And the gym was closed. He did not have a place to train. Later, Entram Gym opened their doors for him. And, and you, these guys log so many hours in their gym. It really is a home away from home, or it is their home. And I was talking to a, a fighter I hope we get to see here pretty soon. Okay, Froggy break, stand it up. Break, 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 it. break. Stand and up. during the pandemic, I interviewed Ready, him, fight. and he said, I live in the gym. There's my bed. I get up and I work. Orpinel, you can see a big welt on his back. But he doesn't want to go to the ground again. He wants to get his distance, but Reyes is not giving him a chance. Reyes, a decorated amateur fighter in MMA. Before MMA, he played soccer and he competed in motocross. How about that for Orpinel? Almost... A reverse power bomb, as you would see in the, the wrestling business. I haven't seen that, but look at that welt on the right shoulder of Orpineda. All that blood rushing to the surface. Now this is what Orpineda wants. He doesn't have much energy left. Uh, that has been sapped by Reyes. But Orpineda, there's the kickboxing. What a blow that was. That's what he... Do two, do three. Heading towards the end of round two. Reyes in trouble. Oh, that's it. Orpineda is gassed. But something to hang his hat on at the end of round two where you can see okay, bro. the very dangerous kickboxing skills. No, we're good. There you see. It's just a matter of getting the underhooks in and getting Orpineda down. Some of those elbows, and uh, Reyes didn't like it. 
but there was a pragmatic approach to the second round for Morpinena. And finally, he was able to make it a stand-up. ...is here for Combate Global. These are always important fights. Technically, the undercard, we show them at the end of the night. We do things differently. And this is obviously for a lot of reasons. But this is Guys, where man, you man. build a resume. This is where Orfineda is or Carlos touch. Reyes are able to okay, lift their game back. and that. take it. Okay, last round. That's a lot of respect there. You love it. Love it. Okay. Fight, you ready. has got Fight, to dig ready. deep. Round three. Find a, a little extra wind in his lungs. Keep a distance. But to finish my thought, these undercards are so important. Uh, guys you see on the main event, we saw them on an undercard. They made an impression and they got up. Orpineda emptying the chamber there. Kick to the top of the head by Reyes. If it's going to be a stand-up game, advantage Orpineda. We haven't really, I mean, we talked about his kickboxing pedigree. It is exceptional. Never lost as a pro and was a national champion in Mexico. He did mention when he fought Jose Calderon here was very weird with no fans. And hearing your feet on the canvas, another low blow. Well, not seen by Russ Greenberg. And a readjustment of the cup. There you see Marcelo Ro in the gray suit, part of Entram Gym. So he certainly has a dog in the fight with Carlos Reyes. Good lead jab by Reyes. And another takedown attempt. Orpineda was able to prevent it. Orpineda is not used to losing. And all of a sudden, it's learning a new craft. It's, it's not a good feeling for him. But he was thrust into the limelight because of his kickboxing career. Where do you get fights if you've got that kind of pedigree? you got to go right to the top. Orpineda said he'll go for the knockout, but he's never been given really an opportunity this evening. Orpineda just cannot get out of Reyes' web. Reyes, this is just his third fight. Oh, guillotine attempt. And another big suplex dropping Reyes, dropping Orpineda from a very high spot. That's excellent wrestling. That was like a, a judo throw as well. It's, it's mixed martial arts, mucho mas acción. It's Come a on, mix of everything. Work, guys. And a very quick warning this time from Russ Greenberg. He's on it. I think he'll separate them uh, if it goes on just a second. How about the submission attempt again? We've seen Orpinella try the guillotine, and now uh, a triangle. It's non-threatening, but at least keeps Reyes. Put some distance between defense. him and Reyes on the fence. And now Greenberg, Russ Greenberg may be thinking about it. Reyes separates Orpineda with a single leg there. But what's he going to do with it? He lets go. Uh-oh. That looks pretty deep for a moment. Orpineda slips his head out. Orpineda, what an incredible story. Um, he trains at Entram CUU in Chihuahua. So Entram's name expanding throughout Mexico. When he was 15, he was in a car accident, was in a wheelchair. At one point, doctors told him he wouldn't walk. Imagine the doctors telling you that. And you saying, guess what? I'm not only going to walk. Another big drop. That with the, uh, the, the takedowns. And certainly the ground game has okay. given Reyes a huge edge. Russ Greenberg thought about it. Elbows to the back of Reyes. They don't feel good, but Reyes has the high ground and is feeling good with a minute and 20 to go here in the final round. He builds a bridge. Another big takedown. Those sharp elbows. Those I mean, he's giving you a big fleshy part of his body that you can work on. I mean, there's not been a spectacular ground game from Reyes. He has a lot of work to do, but he has been able to quell the striker. Under a minute to go. Big right hand, Reyes setting up another guillotine attempt. Orpineda has to come out firing or it's over for him. 
He has knockout power, but he doesn't have time. 40 seconds left. Incredible night here at Combate Global. Our main event, Eric Sanchez gets his 10th professional win, beating Jordan Bull Watch Beltran. Well, last warning. Reyes Cortez, Jr., beating Axel Osuna. First defeat in the career of young Axel Osuna of Guadalajara. Another takedown here by Reyes. He is in Ten seconds. complete control. And he is going to win this fight. And Herman Orpineda with a lot of work to do if he wanted to continue right, in MMA. It. it can't go this way as the fight stops. Look at this. And they're like best friends. They just beat the snot out of each other. Okay, fighters, bring but it to now the it's all for good. These, there, there's a spirit with our fighters that I just can't explain. A lot of it is the Latino background and the respect in the family. And Después all de completar tres vueltas de mucha más acción, esta es la decisión oficial. After three rounds of much more action, the official scorecard reads as follows. Los tres jueces entregan tarjetas idénticas de 29 a 28. All three judges turn in identical scores of 29 to 28 a favor del ganador. Por decisión unánime in favor of the winner. By way of unanimous decision. Puro Tijuana, el Chacal, Carlos Reyes. Carlos Reyes, el Chacal, gets the victory via unanimous decision. And that'll put uh, a bow on a, another interesting night. We are out of time, and it has been a pleasure to be with you. On behalf of our entire production crew, David Estrada, Art Izquierdo, and the entire Combate team in Miami and throughout that make this all possible. My name is Max Pretos. Buenas noches. Placido Domingo from Combate Global.